Thanks, Tim, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, present today. Uh, again, I, uh, last time I, uh, I went a little bit over time, uh, probably by about 150%, so I'll do my best to keep it tighter today. And Lily won't get back on with their Friday drinks. But um, uh, in terms of uh, digital wine ventures, we're um, a company, as, uh, uh, as Tim indicated, we, we're a technology business. We invest in technology platforms that service the uh, global uh, wine and beverage industry. Uh, wine Depot is our cornerstone investment. It's our only investment uh, to date. And the intention is to really uh, build that out until it's profitable and then sort of start to look for other opportunities that can, uh, can basically be bolted on and, and either uh, add value or add volume through the, the, uh, the platform that we've developed. Um, the platform itself, um, it's um, basically designed to re remove inefficiency from the supply chain. And a little bit like uh, uh, the last presenter, the agency, um, you know, we're trying to take out some of the middleman in the equation and, um, and I'll sort of explain a little bit more about how we do that in a minute. Um, we've, uh, we're a startup. We only launched uh, late last year. Our first uh, revenues were generated at the very end of November, uh, but uh, we've had a, um, a fantastic start and uh, been very fortunate in the sense that COVID has provided our business with tailwinds um, rather than headwinds. And um, it's actually, uh, you know, just by chance, but it certainly helped um, accelerate the growth of our business. Uh, if we can move on to the next slide, please. Um, to sum up what, uh, what Wine Depot is, it's essentially a platform that powers direct market sales. And I'll, I'll, um, I'll go into that uh, a little bit further in a second, but um, essentially it consists of three key components. There's a, a B2B marketplace that allows suppliers to trade directly with um, trade buyers. Uh, we're in the process of launching that later this year. There's a smart logistics solution that supports that. And, um, and then we uh, attract other customers um, uh, to that proposition. That was the part that we launched late last year. And then we have a, a cloud-based um, SaaS technology platform uh, that um, sits over the top of, I guess, all of that and allows us to uh, integrate, I guess, disparate technologies across the industry um, and allows our uh, customers, which are primarily uh, wine producers, to manage their inventory and orders across all of their sales channels. Uh, that was also launched at the same time as the Smart Logistics Solution um, last year. Next slide, please. Uh, we'll move on. Just uh, There we are. Thank you. So uh, in terms of how we generate revenue, um, I mentioned those three parts of the platform. And so each one of those generates its own revenue stream. Uh, the marketplace, uh, when it's up and running, will uh, take a transactional fee. So we'll take a percentage of the overall sale transaction between the, uh, the, buy, uh, the seller and, and the buyer. Um, that amount is still to be set, but we're looking at a range of somewhere between about seven and 10% is probably where we'll sit in market. Uh, and that's considerably cheaper than the, the traditional routes to market uh, through the wholesale uh, channel. Um, the size of that market currently is about 2.2 billion in Australia. That's the wholesale value. Uh, we believe we can grow that market by making it uh, an easier um, entry to market for the small and medium sized producers who don't currently have access to that market through uh, a distributor. Um, obviously wine is certainly um, in our DNA and it's our, I guess our core strength, but uh, we've already proven to attract a range of other uh, categories. So we've got uh, craft beers, craft ciders, uh, craft spirits. Uh, we've even got an alcoholic kombucha client now. Um, and so obviously the, the addressable market isn't just wine, it's certainly the overall wholesale liquor market through that platform. The next uh, way we generate revenue is through fulfillment fees. And so this is where we, obviously the, the smart logistics solution we've developed, um, we, we take a percentage um, of the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the, you know, the storage, the picking, packing, the handling costs. Um, it's, a, uh, it's obviously not a, a, a substantial um, contributor to the overall profitability of the business over time, but it's certainly been a great tool to, to be able to, um, to sit, um, disintermediate, I guess, the distributors from, from the B2B uh, marketplace. Uh, and um, it allows us to develop a very sticky relationship with the suppliers. Uh, it also um, is, a, is, a, is a mechanic for us to actually acquire customers and grow out both the, the number of brands that we're working with, but also the number of products. Um, so that uh, when we launch the marketplace later this year, uh, we have a, um, a, a deep supply of products and brands. Uh, last but not least is subscription fees, which we generate from our technology platform. And that's uh, a classic SaaS model based on users and the number of products. Next slide, please. 
Um, so the first stage of our business, which is more or less complete now, was, was um, launching that smart logistics solution. And I mentioned earlier that uh, you know, our platform is a direct to market um, supporting platform. And I guess this is the, the one of our, the, the, the target markets we're addressing is direct to consumer. Um, there's two and a half thousand wineries in Australia. They produce um, you know, collectively about $6 billion worth of wine at wholesale value. And by the time that it's uh, you and I in, uh, in the bars, clubs and bottle shops, that translates to about $45 billion in, to, in contribution to the economy. Um, but a billion of that now is sold direct to consumer. This is the winery selling it straight through to their, um, from their cellar doors to customers. And this is the most profitable channel and therefore it's the fastest growing channel in the market. Um, what has happened, I guess, more recently is it's become incredibly powerful as a way of these businesses actually, um, you know, keeping the light bulbs on. Um, they've lost their export markets, they've lost their trade markets. They've had to rely very much on this channel to actually um, just to keep trading. So. Um, there's been exponential growth in this category as I guess consumers move online and, and um, change their buying uh, patterns. Uh, the part, I guess the, the part, um, uh, the platform uh, that we've developed supports them in this, in this uh, uh, sales channel, this most profitable sales channel, uh, basically allows them to deliver very quickly to customers and at a price far cheaper than they could from their regional areas. And I guess this is the challenge that they're facing at the moment is that even though it's their most profitable route to market, they're losing a lot of that extra profitability uh, through subsidies of the, uh, of the delivery. Next slide, please. Um, so the, the logistic solution, I won't spend a lot of time in this slide. People can come back and have a look at this um, later on if they like. But essentially, the only way we, we, we could provide the level of service that modern consumers uh, want is by having depots located in all of the major metro capitals and holding inventory in market and being able to pick, pack and deliver from those both same and next day. Uh, we support all of those depots from a, a national distribution centre which we've located in Albury Wodonga, just on the border of New South Wales and Victoria, and allows us to quickly replenish those, um, those sites. Uh, we can pick until quite late in the evening, we ship overnight and so we have stock to go in those depots in the morning. Next slide, please. Um, I mentioned before the order management system sits across the top of all of that. Um, we have integrated, I guess, allowed you know, the wineries to bring together all of their technologies um, in, in, through a range of integrations that we've developed with e-commerce systems, with ERP systems, accounting systems, pretty much any way that they, they touch um, and handle wine at the moment, we've integrated with those technologies. Um, so it gives them pure visibility across all of those sales channels and their ability to manage those orders as they go through to their consumers. Um, right down to things like messaging. Next slide, please. Um, so that part of the business um, so far, as I mentioned, we only kicked it off in uh, November and you can see there, um, it, was, it was in the last few days in November, there wasn't a whole lot of volume went through, uh, but uh, we've had um, consistent growth through that entire period. And, and um, to be honest, we're actually pretty proud of this growth. Uh, the industry um, went straight into bushfires really and through December and January and it, um, it certainly knocked a lot of the, um, the producers that we had in our pipeline around but still had lots of sign-ups. February and March is when they have their vintage, that's when they're harvesting their grapes and so they're very, at their busiest. Um, and then obviously COVID's kicked in since then and as I mentioned before it's become more of a tailwind for us and helped really drive growth. Um, next slide please. And to put that in perspective, this really gives you an idea, I guess, of, um, of the, um, you know, the growth that we've had in customers. And I guess we're really starting to see that classic J curve growth, um, averaging about uh, 15 to 20 new customers a month at the moment, that's accelerating. Uh, and I guess this is uh, for us, you know, customers numbers is really one of our lead indicators. It often takes us, you know, four, sometimes eight weeks to get them really up to speed by the time we're fully integrated with their systems and we're starting to see the real volumes come through. So, um, you know, the volumes, um, you know, the number of customers uh, you're seeing here, I guess probably, um, you know, sort of, I'd say 25 to 30% of those really aren't even active in that June um, quarter. So uh, there's certainly inherent growth in the, um, just within the existing customer base, let alone the new ones that we'll acquire. Next slide, please. Uh, actually, if you just, Click it again, just uh, yeah, for some reason, uh, yeah, no, separate leave it. Um, in terms of the customers we've acquired, um, we've uh, managed to track some fantastic brands. Um, and not uh, too long ago, we announced uh, the onboarding of Henschke as a customer. 
Um, that has been, a, uh, a, I guess, a, a real step change in our business. We've seen our marketing uh, almost turn overnight from uh, entirely outbound to predominantly inbound. Um, Henschke are pr probably regarded as the royal family of the Australian wine industry. They're sixth generation winemakers. Um, they've got an internationally recognised brand. Their, their uh, best, uh, well, I guess the most famous wine sells for just shy of $1,000 a bottle. Um, and they are, as far as um, the industry is concerned, is due diligence. And so for them to come on board is a great endorsement of our platform and, and the services that we're offering. Next slide, please. Um, actually, just uh, if we could click it one more time, please. Um, and one more. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Um, but listen, uh, uh, you can visit our uh, website at winedepot.com. You can uh, read some full customer testimonials there. But here's just some little snippets of what the customers are saying about us already. Um, and it's been a fantastic response. And this is really, really important because it's an industry that's driven predominantly by word of mouth. And uh, it's, it's really the, the um, other wineries all talking to each other and driving those endorsements that's become one of the major sources of new customers. So um, to, to, you know, to get off to a, a start like this and have people um, you know, raving about us has been a tremendous endorsement of the business. Next slide, please. Um, so where we are now is uh, we're, um, I guess, in the countdown to launching our marketplace. It's a direct-to-trade marketplace. So coming back again, um, you know, talking about what the platform does, it's all about direct-to-market, two distinct markets, trade and, and consumers. Um, the platform, I guess the real, um, you know, this is, I guess for us, this is the, uh, the crown jewels of our business. Um, we see this as becoming the largest uh, generator of, of revenue and profitability over time. Uh, unlike uh, our logistics business where we're moving cases of wine, this part of the business we're moving ones and zeros. So it has a much higher uh, contribution um, to, the, um, to the overall corporate. The um, profitability runs significantly higher um, and um, you know, sort of upper in vicinity, somewhere between 60 and 80% over time. So um, it's certainly a very attractive um, part of our business. Um, it's also um, the proposition we're taking to market is very attractive to the producers because at the moment they lose between 35 and 50% of their wholesale price to distributors. Um, and so that's the wholesale price. This isn't even the price that the that uh, you and I play when we, uh, we go to the retailer. Um, so it's their least profitable channel. Um, it is the biggest by volume, but least profitable. And so the platform we're providing allows them to service that market without having to go through traditional distributors. Um, so it can release an enormous amount of um, additional profitability for them uh, as well. Um, so the platform obviously sits, um, it integrates with the, uh, the rest of the technology that we've developed. As the orders are processed, they run down through our logistics network where they get picked and packed in the depot that's closest to the customer and then delivered. And that services both their consumer orders but also their trade orders. Next slide, please. Uh, if we could just click it at least maybe once again, please. Um, so I guess the real benefits for the, um, you know, in terms of you looking both sides of the marketplace, so suppliers is definitely around profitability. Uh, but it's certainly in terms of reducing their costs and, and how they manage those customers and their administration. Obviously, um, it's, a, it's an end-to-end -end solution, so they don't have to worry about uh, managing fulfillment. Um, other benefits such as reports and data and insights. But on the buyer's side, um, which has really actually become more and more interesting with COVID, is that it simplifies their operations enormously. So a typical venue might have 50 to 100 suppliers, uh, which they have to order you know, from once a week or twice a week. That's a lot of orders. Uh, then they get uh, you know, 50 to 100 different invoices. They get 50 to 100 different deliveries. They have to make 50 to 100 different reconciliations and then eventually 50 to 100 different payments. And so the platform that we take to market allows them to do that all in single steps. So single account application, single order, single delivery, single invoice, single payment. So it's an enormous amount of administration removed. We also, through the way that we've developed our depots, there's no minimum order size. Uh, and just as consumers are looking for more choice these days and the ability to buy part of cases, so are, so are the trade. And so our platform caters for that need. Uh, and there's also, I guess, some, some steps that we're taking around managing payments and offering credit options as well, um, which we believe, um, particularly in the current environment, will be very attractive to, uh, uh, to help us acquire those, uh, those trade buyers. So um, there's certainly benefits on, on both sides of the equation. 
Uh, next slide, please. In terms of our go-to-market strategy, um, as I mentioned before, we've, we've, we've um, launched the business in stages, um, really targeting the different segments. We've used the direct-to-consumer segment to acquire the volumes of, of, uh, of, of freight through our network to basically to, to build that out and support that network and get it um, tested and, and ready uh, for the launch of our marketplace. And we've also used that to acquire the customers, the brands and the products that we need to have on that marketplace. When the marketplace first goes live this, uh, later this year, the initial focus is on Sydney, Melbourne markets. It doesn't mean that people in other markets won't be able to, to, to utilise it, but it's certainly where we'll be concentrating our marketing efforts. Um, and then, uh, you know, so if, if we flip slides, please. Um, you know, probably about this time next year, we'll be looking to expand that and really try to uh, provide the full proposition across the entire country. Uh, and uh, certainly engaging um, a lot more brands and a lot more producers in the, in the mix. Um, being uh, partnering with selected distributors to really grow up that product range. Um, as I mentioned before, not just wine, but also looking at uh, opportunities within other categories such as craft spirit ciders and beers. Uh, and then to further, further on from that, um, certainly not on our immediate radar, but certainly taking our platform into other markets, uh, in, in particular China, which uh, the company has actually already acquired I guess the corporate, the legal, the financial, and the uh, operating um, license structures to, to operate in China in a very similar fashion. Um, if we move to the next slide, please. Um, China, so I've actually just sort of summarised that, but China's um, a really interesting market for Australia. Um, they have very quickly become our largest export partner for, for the wine category. They, uh, they uh, imported $1.2 billion of wine last year and that was up 55% on the year before. So it's a massive growth market. Um, the, uh, the, the platform that we've created, I guess what's um, interesting is we're not just taking, I guess, our technology and the platform, but to go into a market like China, we're taking our relationships with Australian and New Zealand wineries as well. And I guess that gives us a defensible position in terms of having control over those products. And it also solves a, a very large problem that, is, that everyone has in China is around uh, you know, some copyright and, and counterfeiting. Um, we have the ability, because we're working directly with the producers, is to, to provide authenticity and guarantees of authenticity through to the end buyers, uh, providing us another strategic advantage. The capital raising we, uh, we uh, completed earlier this week, in fact, um, it was led by uh, Blue Ocean Equities. It closed uh, within a matter of hours, um, heavily oversubscribed, which is fantastic. Uh, but it gave us an opportunity to bring in a, a number of institutions into the, into, into the register, um, about a dozen in all. Um, and um, I guess it's really sort of providing us, I guess, the, the support we need to take this business to the next level. Um, all of the directors participated in that offer, as well as um, every single staff member. Uh, very excited, I guess, uh, about getting the opportunity to, to be part of that journey. Uh, and, um, you know, the intention is to really apply that capital to, to growing out, particularly the marketplace over the next couple of years. Um, look, there's uh, some more information about, um, I guess, the directors and the, in the, uh, in the executive team here. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail, but I, I'm very, very proud of the team that I've assembled. Um, this is my eighth startup uh, within the wine and technology space. And I think this is one of the best teams that I've actually pulled together, some fantastic deep domain experience experience, um, not just in wine, but certainly in operations, logistics, technology. Um, so you get the chance to go through and read everyone's CVs. I, I, I appreciate that. Other than that, that's, um, that's about it all from me at the moment. And I'll throw it to questions. Thanks, Dean. Um, we've got lots of questions about the consumer platform. You know, how does that differ to the kind of Stella Door online or Dan Murphy's or Gray's online? Can you, can you, Tell us a little bit more about the consumer experience. Yeah, absolutely, Tim. So we, 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 we don't have and we don't intend to have any consumer-facing presence. Um, we are really providing the back end uh, and the infrastructure to support those direct-to-consumer sales channels. So for the wineries, uh, you know, they still, um, obviously, they're, they're in charge of their customers, managing their customers and generating the sales. Uh, but when they get those sales, They've got the ability to, to offer them same day, next day delivery, uh, which is, is one of the, um, the most powerful promotional tools that, that, that exists in, in terms of online retailing um, in particular. 
Um, so it allows them to compete with the major retailers. Um, so, you know, to, to put it in perspective, uh, a winery in, in the Margaret River, um, shipping to a customer like myself in Sydney, might cost them somewhere between, I guess, uh, on the low side, maybe $30 and up to maybe $50 per case. So it's incredibly erosive on their margins where we offer them that service for $7.95. Um, so there's a massive amount of value getting released back to the wineries, not just in, 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 in the, the cash savings, but also in the speed of delivery. Um, we also um, work with, I guess, the online retailers in a way that we're providing them access to a broader range of inventory so they can order from any of our suppliers. Um, they can push an order through and we can also deliver to their customers either same day or next day. And so we're helping, I guess, grow our platforms like the, you know, the Dan Murphy's um, uh, extended range, uh, but we're also uh, looking at other online channels and marketplaces such as Amazon and eBay and Vivino and the like. And I guess it's really allowing, um, you know, the smaller producers to engage with platforms like that without the retailer having to carry any inventory. Um, so it's a very low risk. Um, and, um, and still meeting their service level expectations. So, so I guess that's, uh, you know, a lot of deliveries, are, you know, people wouldn't be aware that it's actually going through our, um, our network. We, um, you know, we don't, um, you know, all, we're, all we're trying to do is improve that experience and make it um, quicker and, and more cost effective for the suppliers that we work with. And, and how does the subscription model work? So essentially uh, it's, our primary market in that regard is the, is the wineries, but certainly it's, it's open to lots of other user groups. Um, they pay based on, I guess, the, the number of users that they, um, they have using the, the, the platform and also the number of products. Uh, there's also a customer support um, uh, component to it. So we do have a number of customers that um, we manage their customer service as well. So if there are any issues with deliveries, something gets broken or, or um, it's delayed for whatever reason, then we manage that, that um, the communication with the customers for them in a white labelled service. Uh, and I might add, the, the, the capital raising obviously attracts a lot of attention, potentially because it was at a discount, but I might add it was only at a 3% discount to the, you know, the volume weighted average price. So I think investors need to look through that. Um, with the actual capital raising, where are those funds being deployed? Look, uh, to date, uh, so everything we've achieved so far has been on a, a reasonably slim team. I mean, we've only had uh, two business development resources and one of them part-time. So let's call it one and a half uh, BDMs uh, driving all of that customer growth so far. So we're looking to expand that team fourfold. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was one of those things, I guess we wanted to really make sure the system was stable. Um, you know, we'd had a good chance to test things before we ran things up. So it was always... You know, the always intention was to hold back a little bit until we, we had things right. And I'm very comfortable with where we're at right now. Um, so um, certainly resources is part of that spend. Um, completing the development of the marketplace itself uh, on that, R, I guess, that R&D component and technology spend. Uh, look, we, as, as the, the, um, the volume of orders grows, we're going to need to increase the size of our operations team. So, uh, you know, in total, we're going from about 14 heads to 24 over the next six months. So there's, there's quite a lot of you know, human resource in there. Um, and then I guess there's just some general working capital. But, um, you know, it certainly is, um, you know, from uh, our perspective and modelling, it's more than enough runway to, for us to, to see the business through into profitability.